Hey folks, JD here, and I think it's about time we started looking at some 3D quadcopter prints, uh, and also some builds as well of these 3D prints. Now I've done a couple of build videos with quadcopters over the years, normally over about three or four days, step by step. I've done a couple, I've got a couple coming with cars in, in, in the near future, uh, but before I go into that, I want to have a little look at this 3D print in a little bit more detail, and I want to have a little look at some of the things that you can print out from them. So this particular print is not my own creation, it's on Thingiverse, you'll find the STL uh, in the uh, in the in the in the description there. Um, now this is a very rough design, uh, as you can see. I haven't I haven't sanded anything down. You can see some of the PLE bubbling at the bottom there, just from when it has been printed. So I just need to sand that down. And likewise on the top here, there's a couple of bits. So it's very rough this particular frame for the minute. It took an hour and a half to print on 1.75 millimeter PLE. Uh, so I think that hour and a half is not too bad. There's a couple of little things that do concern me. There's a couple of holes down here on the main on the main strut there and there. Um, now there are a couple of little bits as well that I have found that are a little bit concerning. These particular um, these particular little motor housings here are meant to be for standard tin can brushed or coreless motors so I've measured them up and they should be fitting fantastically with the quadcopter I've got in mind to put the guts in from that into here. All in all, I'm very impressed with this as a first print. It's very rough, yes, I know, but at the same time, I'm extremely happy with how that has turned out. If we just look at the overall print, okay, we've got some bubbling, as I said, I need to sand that down. I've got a couple of little holes in the corners here, which I just need to, need to attack with some plastic cement. But overall, I am very, very happy with how this has come out. It looks very nice. It's got a very nice quadcopter frame look to it. It's sturdy, but yet with a lot of flex to it as well, which is exactly what you need. Perfect. Look at that. Great. Okay, so let's see this with some guts. So here we have it. So there we have the quadcopter parts transplanted. Now I didn't show you how I did that because it was actually quite boring to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, what I did was, I look, I had a donor quadcopter, I've got about four or five donor quadcopters and I've just essentially put the, the, the parts in here. I haven't screwed down or, uh, or tied down this particular uh, printed circuit board simply because it's a very very tight fit in there and I don't want to apply any more pressure. I do want to have a little bit of movement out of it just so that it, uh, it, it can flex and flex with the chassis as it's moving and turning. Now there are a couple of bits that I do find a bit concerning with this. These particular tin can motors are meant to be the exact size for this particular print but unfortunately we have had a couple of mishaps here with, there we are, I don't know how well you can see that there, but with this uh, with the motor housings just splitting. So what I've done, I've gone through with some plastic cement and just ensured that everything is actually all uh, nicely Nicely cemented up, ready to go for the flight. Um, in my initial testing, I have accidentally dropped this and I've smashed the uh, the bottom of the housing here. So again, I've used some plastic cement and uh, some hobby clamps and clamped that down for the past day and that looks to be okay and I didn't have any issues there. Again, this side, I've got maybe a, a little issue here again. Nope, nothing there. There we are, that's it. And I've got another crack under there, uh, which I've just put some plastic cement in. So for the second, this is the first, this is sort of like the, the, the real sort of alpha test to see how well this frame handles with tight turns, corners and everything else. Uh, I just want to see exactly how it looks, how it works. Over the coming weeks, I'm going to be adapting this particular frame. So as I said, this isn't my design yet, uh, but I am going to be adapting it, making different things larger, thicker, adding a bit more plastic, changing the size of these motor housings as well as a couple of other things which I go into after the test flight in a couple of minutes. So let's weigh it and let's see exactly what we've got. So I've got uh, I, I've got uh, another frame here that I've printed. Uh, so let's put that in first. So that comes out at uh, 8 grams there. 8 grams for a naked frame. And then we're down to zero. So let's pop this in. We've got 42 grams of the frame. That's not the flying weight. At a battery, you've got 46 grams. So 46 gram flying weight for this particular quad. Uh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. It does mean that I shouldn't have flown it in the weather that I had that I have flown it in. Uh, I flew it in winds of up to eight, nine, I think, miles an hour, and it handled. I, I thought pretty well uh, for its small size and small form factor. Something to do as well with all these holes going in. The wind can pass through, and it's not a solid object, so it's not going to get blown about that badly with the wind. Although we did have a couple of landings where the wind just literally pushed down for the front of it and just push the quad down. All in all, I'm extremely happy with the first build. I think these frames are, are pretty good. Hour and a half build out of uh, you know 1.75 millimeter PLA. 
not too bad at all. I really quite like that. Uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little look at the flight and see exactly how that went. And then, as I say, in coming weeks, I'm going to go over this a little bit more and change this design. But at the end of the video, I tell you exactly what I'm going to change and why I'm going to change it. Okay, let's give this a, a shot. Now we're going to try it outside. We've got a seven mile hour wind from my left coming straight across me and over. And the tree is... They're giving a bit of a wiggle, but not a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting this, because it's ridiculously light, into speed mode 3. And then hoping that we don't have a flyaway. Let's have a look. Because this is... Oh, let's land it. This is ridiculously, ridiculously light. Uh, what I have noticed, a couple of little points in my little tests, is that if, and I think that's what I've done here, if the battery, uh, the battery strap is too tight, then what you'll get is you'll have just spinning. Nothing but spinning. And what you must do is then slacken that off. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. So you've got to slacken off the strap just enough, just so that you don't get any bowing in the uh, in the body but not enough that the battery falls out so and that's the problem because some of the straps are too thin some of the straps are too long uh some of them were flapping about and the, the propellers were hitting them so it really is finding that specific one which really is going to uh, going to work um so let's see what we got now we've this is a brushed copter as i said and this is there we are now it's flying perfectly we have got three speed modes. I am in speed mode three. This is a nice little little shifter. The old copter this came from. God rest its soul. Um, it was a lovely little thing. Very, you know, very sort of darty, very sort of quick. Hello, my green princess. Yeah, as you can tell, I still haven't got a name for her. Because uh, for the second, this is just proof of concept. More than anything else, I just want to make sure that what I'm printing is actually able to hold up with the with the the constraints of flight uh, and all the different all the different motions and all the different uh, pressures that flight is going to give it in every single angle, sort of. Um, and just make sure the body isn't going to crack. I mean, the body is fragile, it's 3D printed, it's not thick. I should have done it a lot thicker. I really should have. But for the second, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing... Oh, whoa, 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 did you see that? One of the motors just stopped. Okay, so I've got a bit of an issue there, so I've got to address that. But that's, that's, that's separate, that's not down to the print. That's just down to... Oh, this day is ridiculously windy. Whoa, okay. Let it find its centre. Let it find its centre. If I just bring it in. I mean, the altitude hold is working pretty well. I'm just going to control its direction for the second. But as you can see, it is ridiculously windy for such a small, light copter such as this. But, whoa, whoa. Ooh, that was a nasty one. I do have a weakness on one of the, um, on one of the propeller arms from my tests. So what happened in one of my tests, just to show you, I've actually severed the uh, the motor housing there. So I had to go back around it with some hobby glue and make sure that that's stuck on. But I've also done the same to all the others as well because the motors are slightly too big. Even though the dimensions on the STL were for this particular type of tin can motor, what it actually boils down to is that, is that it's not, they're not. Uh, the, the motors I've got here, which are the, the motors on the, on, the, on the STL, are actually, these, these are a little bit too big. It's okay, I mean, it'll do for a little test. At least I know when I'm flying it now, you know, it's flying well, it's holding itself. I've got a bit of a problem with the back back left motor because that's just cut out and then started spinning again. So I'm gonna replace that because I've got a load of motors in the house. Um, I think weight-wise, I think it's actually okay. Because we've got, because these motors and because the, the copter this came from was actually pretty damn strong, it turns out that actually what we've got is we've actually got a pretty good mover <laughs> now what i am concerned about a little bit is that ooh, is that that barometer is open to the elements and even though yes it is a bare bone quad and even though you know you are going to have the accelerometer is going to be open to the elements for issues like that now so i was accelerated i was increasing throttle but yet the barometer, because I was a little bit too low to the ground, the barometer 
was actually reading, I think, incorrectly. Now what I'm going to do is, I've done this in the past with some of my other bare bones, is I have covered it in a very, very, very thin solution. Just so that it's got a little bit of covering, but it can still read. And I find on those attempts, oh, and because the battery is shifting as well, and I find when I do that, that the, the copter itself stays at a more level altitude for longer. So I'm going to try that and see how we go. I'm going to increase the, the tightness of that. See, that's too tight now. And it just starts spinning out of control, see? So what I'm going to do is... And that's, that's the issue, see, with the smaller quads like this. That's okay though, it's just, just a prototype. Let's loosen that a little bit. See, there's too much bowing in the centre there. Let's pick that back up. I mean, really, what I should do with this is I should print a battery cage and then put the battery cage on the back of it, exactly where that is. Just a thin line battery case, you know, just for, come on, just for this particular issue. Now, I don't want to take her up too high, obviously, because if I take her up too high with this wind, you can see all the pressures on her with this wind. No, do you know what? I'm going to call that there. I really am, because I think I'm a bit concerned because she's very light and I am pushing her very hard. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to call that there. So, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Good, good, good. So, that is the end result. End result is quadcopter flies. It flies pretty well, although I do have work to do. And where I have work to do, let me just turn this off first. And the areas I have to do some work in are as follows. The frame, make the frame a little bit bigger, make it a little bit thicker. I think I'm going to increase the thickness slightly on these motor mounts so that they are slightly thicker. Probably take flare out this propeller arm slightly, which means that I can flare out the motor. Then from there, I'm going to create a battery cage to go on top. Uh, obviously, there is a camera that came with this quadcopter, and I am going to fit my own camera to it. So I need a little space at the front there to fit that. So I'm going to elongate the front. So I think a couple of other little, little things like that. And I should have a copter which comes out to here which is sort of from the back end there where my finger is to sort of there and that would still be under the 250 gram weight restriction um, and then from there hopefully we're going to have a good solid flyer a bit more weight to counteract this breeze because for the second this quadcopter is lighter than the original one I got the parts out of so <laughs> so yeah I think for me it's still almost a dead cert to actually get that sorted but there we go perfect I'm very happy first first job really 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 good I was very concerned it wasn't going to fly or it wasn't going to fly right or there would be something wrong but I'm extremely happy with how that turned out all right then my friends that's it for this particular episode but this is going to be carrying on thanks ever so much for watching and listening my friends I've been JD you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers I hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying